Imagine that you and your friend are walking along a beautiful beach somewhere wonderfully tropical and perfect. You're taking in the sea air, enjoying the feeling of the warm, fine sand between your toes. Looking back to see your trail of footprints in the sand, you notice something odd. Your friend's footprints are perfectly formed and beautifully shaped. Yours, however, looks somewhat more rounded, kind of blobby, and, well, not so nice. Why is this? What's happened to your feet? Curious? Stay with me and I'll explain a possible reason for this and a lot more as we learn about the functions of the tibialis posterior muscle. Before we explore the different functions of the tibialis posterior, let's first remind ourselves of its anatomy. As you can see on the screen, this muscle is found in the deepest portion of the posterior compartment of the leg, between the two bones of the leg, which are the tibia and fibula. At its proximal end, the tibialis posterior has three attachment sites. It originates from the posterior surface of the tibia, the posterior surface of the fibula, and the interosseous membrane of the leg that lies between the tibia and fibula. Moving down to the distal end of the leg, we can see that the tendon courses through a groove posterior to the medial malleolus of the tibia, along with the tendon of another muscle, the flexor digitorum longus. This is an important landmark, as this groove, the medial malleolar sulcus, acts as a pulley and is necessary for the functions of the tibialis posterior to be carried out. From the medial malleolar sulcus, the tendon passes to the plantar aspect of the foot, where it attaches to several bones, initially the navicular and the medial cuneiform bones, before proceeding laterally to the intermediate and lateral cuneiform bones, as well as the second through fourth metatarsals. It may also give an attachment to the cuboid bone. Looking at these attachments is important, as it allows us to see which joints will be involved with the movement of this muscle. And in this case, we have two primary joints which the tibialis posterior works on. The first is the talocrural joint, commonly known as the ankle joint. This is a hinge joint formed by the malleoli of the tibia and fibula, which articulate with the talus bone of the foot. The other joint we need to be aware of here is the subtalar joint, which is also known as the talocalcaneal joint, as it involves the talus and calcaneous bones. It's worth mentioning that the tibialis posterior also works on several other small joints located between the tarsal bones of the foot, which are known as the intertarsal joints. Like all muscles, the tibialis posterior needs some innervation to tell it how to behave. And here our nerve of interest is the tibial nerve, which is derived from the L4 and L5 roots of the lumbar plexus. The tibial nerve is the larger of the two main branches of the sciatic nerve. Now let's turn our attention to the functions of the tibialis posterior. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at kenhub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles, and atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy.